Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be going over how to build a DB9 connector. Now, many uh, questions have come in on this over the years and I have really wanted to do a video on this, but what I wanted to do really is change the way a solder type DB9 connector is assembled in terms of simplicity. And what I mean by that is here is a male DB9 connector and you can see the male pins right here. And then as we come over here, what makes these DB9 connectors so unique is the fact that I've graphicked the actual pins for the DB9 connector. And any of you who have ever worked with these connectors before in the industry realize there are no pins that are actually numbered except on the far sides and they're in black, very hard to read. And I wanted to simplify the assembly of these connectors. You can see on the other side, that decal is there too. So once again, you've got a real simple method of basically having an applicable wiring diagram. Um, again, this simplifies the entire connector's assembly because I can't tell you how many questions over time I've received on, hey, I'm soldering a connector and I've lost my spot. What pin am I on? And that, it's happened to me numerous times. And again, if you're working with these type of small connectors, and if you look closely, um, and again, I don't even know if the camera can pick this up, and this is being shot in 4K, but they do have number allocations inside the connector. Um, but that's just not practical when you're assembling one of these to be wiring these terminals and then have to dismount the connector and review where you are because you've lost your place. If you purchase the connectors from me, you will receive the wiring diagram labels for all of the connectors. So you can label one, it'll take a little time, review the pin numbers, label one, and then just match the labels on all of them. And no matter how you rotate the connector, you'll be able to easily identify what pins you're soldering. So this totally changes these connectors as far as what's available currently because there's nothing like this. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is show you how to solder these. I've seen a lot of videos on soldering and I'm gonna show you my technique. And again, you be the judge, but I can rest assured and tell you that doing hundreds of these this is the easiest method I have found, and again, I'm going to do it live for you so you can check it out. So what I'm going to do right here, I've got my trusty vise, and of course the vise does have rubber jaws. I've removed the rubber jaws, and you can see I have a V-groove in the vise. I'm going to slide the connector in the vise, and actually I'm going to rotate it over so we can do six through nine pins. And I'm just going to come over here and lightly put pressure on it. And you can see how firm this is. I've seen guys use helping hands on each side of the connector and hold it only on one end and then when you actually go to solder you don't have a firm grip so the connector itself can move and if that happens you're SOL. So we want to make sure you have a nice firm grip on the connector without naturally destroying anything. And you can see what we've got here. She's nicely in place and jigged. Soldering iron right now is just going to heat up. I've got my Kester 186 uh, RMA Flux. First thing I like to do is just come over here and flux all of the actual terminals. In this case, I'm only gonna be doing two as an example, but uh, just to give you an ex uh, the idea, I flux them all. Matter of fact, I've got just a sample lead here. It is tinned. Um, a lot of guys like to go in and tin these. I don't recommend doing that because first of all, your heat conduction is so close with these when you're using whatever lead you are going to be using. And that being said, you can see right here, I've got a 20 gauge lead, and then I have the maximum size you can use in these connectors, which is 18 gauge. These are both silicone leads, just for demonstration purposes. You can see the size difference. But if you're trying to go bigger than 18 gauge, it's not just not gonna happen. Um, these are, without a doubt, for safety, the maximum size you'll go is 18 gauge. For the demonstration, I'll use both, and I'll show you exactly the technique. Um, once again, once the flux has been applied there, you can see how the fit is with the actual 20 gauge, very, very nice. And I'll show you the 18 gauge once we get to it. Now, once we are all heated up here on our iron, which we are, and now I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna reflux the top of the lead very lightly. Now I'm gonna come in here real easy. And I'm just gonna apply some solder right to the tip of my iron. But what I'm gonna do is you notice I'm keeping the iron really, really high arced I'm just going to make contact. Let that heat go. You'll have a contact joint formed. And I like to do this twice. Everybody's different, depending on the amount of solder I'm putting on. Actually, this. Yeah. 
this. There we go, a little more flux. And this way you can see I've got a tack already formed and I'm just going to come in again and just touch. And you can see we got a perfect joint right there. If she wants to shoot right here through the lens, you can really see. I'm just going to do a quick clean. These probably don't need much because once again we're using RMA Flux. Get our fibers out of there. And you can see exactly that joint. In fact, I'll tilt it over. And you can see just how nice that chrome joint looks and how clean everything is. Okay, and once again we're on pin 6. Very easy to identify. We know right where we are. There is no bleed through. Now I've had a lot of questions about do you insulate these after you solder them? This is an internal connector. And I'm going to cover assembling the hood in a second, but being it's an internal connector, there's really no need for you to insulate these. Okay, this is not a uh, an assembled enclosure, so to speak, where you'd be working and worrying about you know contact points. Once these are soldered on and the case is assembled, you really don't mess with this. If you do want to insulate them, I have some guys that are in and want to do it. That's fine. An easy way to do it would be to use a liquid insulation because of the tight tolerance you have between the connectors. Okay, once again, you can see you got a couple millimeters between connectors. It really doesn't make sense to do that. Now I'm going to do the 18 gauge lead. Process is the same. And I'll do it side by side to give you an idea of just how tight a tolerance we're working with. I'm just going to hit the actual conductor. Get some flux. There we go. Now that that's done, put this, put our Q tip back. And you can see just the difference in the size constraint of the two leads. Just for demonstration purposes, we'll let our iron heat up. I'm cleaning my tip right now. Once again, cleanliness is everything with your iron and flux is mandatory. I've said this in previous videos. I cannot emphasize it enough. I've got my solder on my tip once again. And you can see I just go down the line. Going to apply, let that heat transfer. Do not be in too much of a rush. You can see we've got that solder joint on there. I'm just going to touch it one more time. And again, we'll just come on here, light flux. Nothing to it. And again, with the, the beauty of having this diagram on there, you will never get lost. You can go right through here and, and there you go. You can see, let me just clean that real quick. You notice I'm rotating my, uh, my Q-tip actually with the connector, meaning I'm not going against it, against the actual casing, I'm going with it, so we keep it nice and clean. And once again, you can see the connector in the joint. Flawless. Now, for the next step, which is assembly of the unit. Matter of fact, she can shoot through here. I don't know if she can get, it, get those through the actual magnification lens. Yeah, there you go see how that came out. Um, what we're going to do now, and this is real simple, I'm going to get our vise out of the way, and I get a lot of questions on the DB9 hood. Is there an easy way to do this? Well, there really isn't an easy way, per se, to do it. Um, I personally like to have uh, the, the actual five pins on top. I like to have that on the bottom, so to speak. Here's the bottom of the hood. You can see I have assembled here the, uh, the, the actual um, flathead screws that go in. And what you're going to want to do is come over here gently, get these aligned, carefully, carefully, let them drop in. And if you get flux on your hands, rest assured, it's so sticky, it'll make it even harder. Now, that's how you would assemble this part prior to doing this, because I actually skipped a step. I'll do it. I'm doing it live. This is your stress relief. Okay. Now, you see I assembled one half with the Phillips head screw. These are real small, included with every connector. And you can see one end has a thread, and then the opposite end also has a thread over here. And you want to have it to where it's crisscrossed. So one thread's going this way, one thread, one screw would actually go in this way. Okay? And what you're going to want to do is put your stress relief over your actual back end of the connector. And then once it's screwed together, which in this case I'm not going to do because I only have two leads, um, you're essentially going to do the assembly process I just did. So I'm going to come over here, and then this, of course, once again, and you could do this either way you like, whatever way you're comfortable with, this would come over here, 
and basically go right up here once assembled. Okay, with, of course, the other screw in. This is just for example purposes. Once that's completed, you're going to want to take the top hood and you're going to want to come over here carefully, just use your hands very carefully, assemble. You got a little bit of play there to where you can manipulate these little back braces. And once everything is perfect, you can see how everything is aligned and it fits in and now you're good to go. Now, final assembly is done using, and this can be done on either side, you've got your Phillips head screws, they insert through the connector, and you can see it's actually jigged for the nut so it self-locks. So once you install this, the nut will stay in place, one screwdriver, once again I'll only do one, and you can see how it holds the nut, and there you go, and you're assembled. Okay. When I get asked questions on assembling these, um, again, they are tedious, like many connectors are. Um, is it impossible? You saw how fast this was. I did two connectors. Once again, I did a 20 and an 18 gauge. If you guys are doing uh, 20 gauge, nothing to it. 18 gauge, nothing to it. If you're using the proper tools. Once again, I prefer my Kester 6040. Uh, some guys want to use different solder. That's up to them. Flux is mandatory. Any electrical connection that you want done properly, flux should be used. Okay, there is uh, just a huge disparity online on what I'm seeing done today where guys are doing critical application assembly and not including flux because they feel that the rosin flux uh, that the solder has is enough. It simply isn't, guys. You're supposed to use flux on every connection, and you've seen how easy it was. Now, again, um, is this for everybody? Of course it's not, but I feel now with the wiring diagram on these connections, it definitely makes this a much, much easier assembly. If you'd like, I can also include those diagrams, an extra set, again at extra cost, you just message me, uh, for the actual connectors themselves, the hoods. So if you wanted to know on the hood what pins you're, work you're looking at, you could actually apply them here and you'd be set. Okay, but overall, this definitely changes this connector because in the industry, it's never been changed in years. It definitely makes it a much simpler assembly. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. Uh, I will have a link to these connectors in my store because again, I plan on being one of the cheapest uh, vendors for these because I deal with so many of them. Um, and again, they have so many usage, uses in um, not just CNC, but general electronics. Um, and if you need to buy them in bulk, let me know. I'll give you the best price I possibly can, of course, including the wiring diagram stickers. Uh, to all my subscribers, I love you guys. If you need to contact me direct, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. That is my direct email address. If uh, you can't contact me there or you feel more comfortable, contact me through my eBay store. That link will be there, too. You'll see it somewhere on the screen, and you'll be set to go. Thank you all for your support. Take care.